All right. Good afternoon, Dr. Shankopotamus here. I'm working on the 2009 911 uh, Turbo, Porsche Turbo. Um, you can see the back end is up here because the engine, of course, is in the back end on these bad boys. Um, I'll show you how to do the oil change today. Um, I also have, I think if it'll show up here, recommendations. Let me show you. So if you can read that, that's off the phone. I can give you the connection for that. It's pretty easy to find a maintenance schedule. Oil change there every uh, 10,000 miles or one year. And a lot of people forget to do the, the oil change at a year point. Um, water over time will build up in your oil, uh, damage your engine, corrode the inside of your engine. So it's a good idea, especially with a high-end performance vehicle like this, to change the oil when you're supposed to. I'm, I'm almost a year to the day of an oil change. Um, I'm nowhere near 10,000 miles this year, but um, just about right on time for the oil change. Um, let me show you what you're going to need. Um, you are going to need a couple of sockets here. 15, yeah. You need yourself a 15 and a 19 Okay, for your sockets. I'm using 3 8 inch drives. You're going to need something to drive them with. That's what I got. All right. Obviously, you need a new filter. This is the number for my model year there, if you can see it. It's a Porsche. You can use, I've seen people use all kinds of other filters, but this one was on sale, so I went with the Porsche brand. You are going to need a little cap like this to get your filter off, your filter housing off. There's no way to get a hold of it except with this little bad boy. I think this came from ECS tuning, maybe? Anyway, nice little thing. And then you're going to replace all your O-rings. This particular O-ring is for the filter housing. That comes with your filter. Okay. Some companies put together filter kits that will have your, your new O-rings in there and your new, and your new um, washers. Here's the O-ring you need for this model. You can see it. There's your number, 997-707-46540. That also goes into the filter housing, a little O-ring. All right. And then on the underside, you're going to be draining two different areas here on this uh, Porsche. There's one of them. One of them is an aluminum washer, ceiling washer. One of them is a copper ceiling washer. Okay. And um, I think this is from your oil reservoir. I think this is from the um, engine block. But we'll see. We'll get up underneath there because it's a little bit bigger. One more thing you're going to need because of the way this Porsche is designed underneath, and I'll show you that. A 27, whoop, yeah, there you go, right side up. You're gonna need a 27 wrench or an adjustable wrench that you can adjust the 27 to get a hold of it. Um, because if you don't, if you crank on the drain plug up underneath there without holding it with this, you're gonna tear something up and I'll show you how that works. So, um, good idea to have your car warmed up just a little bit, the oil will come out quicker. All right, oh, you're gonna need some oil too. Let me get that over here. So, the recommendation from Porsche is for 0W40, okay? I have been using Liquamoly in my BMWs for, I don't know, a million years, and it's done absolutely fine. This is what I'm putting in, okay? Now, 0W40, Mobile One is their recommendation. There's a sticker up there, if you can see it, right up there. Um, but also, 5W40 is one of the recommended weights. I don't know if it matters or not, but some research that I have done and looked through is if your car is a little bit older, a slightly heavier weight, first of all, is easier on the gas mileage. I don't know if that's true or not either, but they say it helps to kind of invade the micro cracks and that sort of stuff and seal the engine a little bit better. So that's what I'm doing, going with that. And you're going to need 8.2 liters of that. All right, we'll get started. All right, so we got the car up a little higher and get up underneath it. Um, and show you a few things here. Oh, the other, you don't really have to take your wheels off to change the oil, obviously. I just finished up another job working on the um, O2 sensors. And so I left the wheels off because I'm going to clean them before I put them back on to help out my type A personality so I can sleep tonight and there be cleaner. Anyway, um, so obviously you don't have to take the wheels off to do that. They're just off right now. Um, we're underneath, we're looking to the passenger side, just to the front of the engine bay, and here's what you're after, okay? It's your oil reservoir right there. And now here's your problem. This, this thing is, I'm not gonna say flimsy, but um, this is not like uh, where you can really put some torque on this thing. 
you try to put some torque on this little bad boy right here big time and you are gonna twist this and might break your reservoir and have to um, install a whole new reservoir so that's why you're gonna have to have a 27 and I do not recommend trying this without it so you got to get this up in here to have counter oops sorry to have some counter traction right that's my 27 fits right up beneath there and I'll put my ratchet on the bottom and, and peel it off okay obviously I'm gonna have my catch up underneath it so I will try to film that happening in real time let me get the other one and if you come back towards the center of the engine there is a drain plug on your engine block it's right here okay and it looks like I had them backwards the engine block has got the aluminum um, washer on it and the reservoir has got the copper washer on it but you'll once you take them off you will to be able to tell who's who so I'm going to grab the tools and my catch pan and we'll start getting these things off now another recommendation that they make I don't know if I've ever done this but they say let the engine drain for almost 20 minutes to get every bit of the bad oil out of there I don't know 20 minutes is a long freaking time I'm gonna let it drain while I drop it back down and pull the filter off I think if I got enough room um, but I don't think I'm waiting 20 minutes but let me grab the drain pan we'll get this stuff off alrighty okay so they will get a hold of it if y'all can see this I think I'm gonna be right in the way when we do this. Let me come around over here. Sorry about the thing. Um, now you'll be able to see. This actually works great. 27 on there. But a bing, but a bow. And you're on, okay. And then come up. Already loosened it, but you just give it a little something, something, and off she comes. See there? But be sure you're holding that nut right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it off by hand the rest of the way. And We'll start draining a little oil here. Set those aside. Um, I used to wear the leather gloves. I've gone to the plastic ones. Nitrile actually, thick, ridged, nicer. And especially for doing this, if you like those leather gloves, they are nice. Be sure you get something more like these or some coated gloves so this oil doesn't go all over you. And of course, I ran the engine just for a little bit, and so the oil is going to be hot. And there it is. Comes out under a little bit of pressure, a little bit on the floor. We got a mat down there, we're good. And there it is. All right, so we've got the drain for the reservoir back on. Haven't uh, torqued it down yet, but just got it on there. It's not leaking any oil, all the oil's out. You can see this one is starting to drip a little bit here on the engine block. I've loosened it up and we just bring it on off and we should be getting some oil out of this thing keep pressure on it until you're ready like that to take it off there we go so i'll let it drain for a bit and um, replace the washer on there and put it back together okay so um a couple of things before we move on i've got this drain the rest of the way i'm going to put the plug back in here for the crankcase um, and a new washer um, one thing i forgot to mention at the beginning here is you're going to need your torque wrench okay too um, and i'll get the torques for you here in a little bit make sure i don't mess them up um, they're kind of hard to find i'm sure they apply to this car as well after a couple of videos i found them um, another thing very important we're getting towards the um, end of doing this and i don't think i'm going to break anything and so you got to get your home brew out to help you uh help you finish this job Sorry, that's necessary. Sorry about that. Um, and now, a couple of other things that I'd like to point out. And this is what I'll do next time. This plug in the crankcase is hollow. It's the original plug. It's nice to have the plugs that have the um, little magnetic collector in them. And that way, when you pull them off, you can check them. And if you're getting little particles showing up in your crankcase, you know, something's happening with your engine. Little medical particles coming into there. And it'll pull that out but it's a good idea I just didn't get it for this one um, another interesting thing underneath here let me show you um, this is a 2009 911 so it's a 9971 but there's kind of a crossover period 9971 972 right at 2009 the 2008s are 
seven nine and seven ones, two thousand nine or nine and sevens two, except the turbos, nine and seven one, nine and nine seven two, blah blah blah. blah. Just drives me crazy. But anyway, um, and so a lot of the videos I've looked at, um, and that's why I can't find a really good manual. Quite honestly, I've got several online manuals that I've ordered um, that I go through, and they just they don't really do this car right. Um, here's one thing that they all got wrong, and that's these oil reservoirs for the turbos. Um, every other model that I can see under the oil reservoir for the turbos, they've got a drain plug, okay? This one, where you might have a drain plug, the drain plug's usually here, but even if you wanted to put a drain plug in there, like right there, that's just a plug, that's just plugged. So these oil reservoirs for the drain plug, for the turbos, the only way I could think you could ever drain the thing would be to take the whole connection off. None of any sense. So these actually, and I don't know since all I have is this one, I don't know if going forward with the 9972s, did they lose the, the drain for the smoke? Because there's not much oil in there. But still, um, I went around looking. I said, ah, drain these. But you can't on this particular car. So, you know. But anyway, with that said, if you've got a turbo and it's not this particular year turbo, there'll be a drain plug right here. And if you want to be complete, you get that drain plug out. Okay, it uses an eight millimeter, I think, hex. Um, and just pull the drain plug out. You'll drain out about four to six ounces or something, you know, 10 cc's, 12 cc's of fluid, maybe give or take. I don't know if I did my conversion right, anyway. Um, and then put a new washer, new plug back in. But interesting enough, these, these don't have them. So I'm gonna get back to uh, putting these things back on. I'll get the bolts on, double check my torques and uh, tell you where your torque is supposed to be for these bad boys. All right. All right, so we've got the crank uh, case drain plug back on, new washer in there. Torque wrench, all right. Uh, your torque on this is uh, 52 foot-pounds. Um, I've, seen, I've seen some other things online that say 70 newton meters on this one and 60 newton meters back at your tank. Um, a lot of the things I've seen is uh, 52 and 44, it's right about the same. So. Uh, as in foot pounds. So I'm gonna go with 52 and 44 foot pounds. So 52 foot pounds up front here. And we'll go till we click off on it. There it is. All right. So I'm gonna change it out for the tank back there. And go with my 19. And we'll adjust it down to uh, 44 foot-pounds. All right, and this one, all of them are a little different, you can see. Oh, newton meter, sorry. Foot-pounds across here. And we'll come on down to uh, 44 foot-pounds. We're headed back over here. All right, let me get us into there. Hang on. Okay, good deal. And remember, you want to counter-torque this one. All right, there he is, or there it is, she is, whatever it is. Okay, so let me get a hold of that. These are 27 on there. And I found it easier to support it like this. Got a new copper washer in it, right? And then we're just gonna tighten her on up. There it goes. All right, so we're down a little bit on the lift. So we can go after the filter. And you're gonna need, and of course do the oil fill too. And like I mentioned earlier, you're gonna have to have this to get a hold of your filter housing. All right. Let's see here. Oh. Alrighty. And so pretty much easy, uh, easy peasy right there. Okay. Now one thing you do want to do is to um, Slap on some some kind of towels or something here. It's got a nice little catch, you know, with the zest for it, so you just don't make too much of a mess. But um, this engine has gone a lot of miles and very very clean. And I would hate to be the one to make such a mess of it. So towels are cheap, and trying to clean oil out of the innards of my engine is not. Okay, so I'm going to put these guys 
right up in here and they should take care of about anything that is going to come out all right um, and it's just a regular heavy duty shop towels you can put like cloth shop towels down to or you know your ex-girlfriend's sweater that she left at the house you can put that in there too whatever works for you um, so we're just going to come off with this pretty straightforward all right and you can use this um, a spacer I like this one it's angled a little bit and um, uh -huh. okay we'll come off here okay oh, but these are getting a hold of it from the other side and then watch your uh, paint and everything here obviously and as we're going you should just come right on off here yeah buddy okay might speed this part up huh well okay let's keep going here there we go now we're in business all right so I'll take this bad boy off all right and you can never have too many towels so let me grab a few more towels okay so just in case you know you're gonna have a little bit of oil and mess on here then I'll show you okay so there we go success all right so you can see this is the o-ring you're going to be replacing right up here and another tool you'll need I'll show you what I use you really don't want to use anything sharp to get in there and get that o-ring out um, in this case you this is hard plastic so if you use something sharp you're liable to damage it then your o-ring doesn't seal well hmm bad choice um, so you want something that's like a little flat whoop, spatula type thing and I've got some of those so it's, it's right in um, not that you're worried about the o-ring the thing is a sharp to the ring out you about the o-ring you tear it up but I got a new ring to replace it all right and then your other o-ring is right back here so you say pacey let me get my little tool for getting the o-rings off and I'll show you how that works all right all right so let me show you how this works there's the little tools I don't know if I got these I don't know Amazon or ECS tuning or where I got them from so and for those of you worrying and wondering and concerned and it just go oh, sorry it goes right underneath here well it will eventually go up underneath there no it won't it takes a little something something you can see sometimes right yep and you eventually get up underneath it there you go up underneath it without tearing it up so for the concern there goes my o-ring the homebrew is an extra special bitter okay nice stuff and added a few extra bitterness to it because I like the bitter so it's got some extra hops and I like the malt so it's got some extra malt in it kind of tweaked it a little bit but extra special bitter good stuff same thing here okay how much easier to hold that one and then you just peel them off all right um, I'll put the new ones onto there the new ones you want to coat them just a little bit of oil make sure that they seal real well and then we'll put the a new filter back in you can see the filters in here this is a mall molly mally i don't know molly use these a lot on the um a bmws and this is actually the filter i put in a year ago too so just this year the porsche was on sale it's almost the same price i got a porsche to put in there so let me get the filter going here okay so we'll get the um here he goes and the filter goes in there really easy just bada bing bada bow new o-ring okay it's got a little bit of oil down inside of it I want to be really careful setting that back up there have oil everywhere but we'll get this one get my greasy gloves get this one opened up for you okay on down 
Okay, good. Got my other filter, I got my filter, take it off. Okay. Get some oil onto here. And I'll just kind of rub it around. So I got a little oil on that O-ring. A little oil on this O-ring. Ooh, a little oil on the cap. I'm gonna clean that off. So um clean out what kind of spilled right here, and that's what this catch is for. Get all this out. It's nice and clean. Okay. So I open up my other filter, get it into there. All right, here we go. Little bad boy right here. All right. Okay. Make sure he's down there and seats well. He goes down and get him. There he goes. Okay, and now I'm going to switch over. Torque wrench, 19 foot pounds for the housing. Okay, and then we'll look at putting the oil back in. Okay, so we've got a little funnel on here where the oil fill is, right over there. Okay. So I'm going to grab the oil and go at it. 8.2, I think is what it says. Some of the things online say 8.1. One of my manuals says 8.1. Um, I suppose 8.2, but definitely don't overfill it. Okay. Um, if you're slightly under, then you know just warm it up and check the oil fill with the computer. Check the oil level with the computer and see how you're doing. Let me go ahead and fill her up here. And we're we're on. We are on and we are golden. All righty. Well, there it is. Oil change on the uh, 2009 Porsche 911 Turbo. Um, hope it was helpful. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, and of course, if you liked it, you know, go ahead and say so. Constructive criticism is always uh, welcome. You know, haters are going to be haters. You can't stop that. But anyway, please uh, sign up with the channel. I'll be posting things whenever I fix things um, along the way. So anyway. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, you all have a good evening. Bye-bye.